Hi everyone, it's Carol Ann here. Today we're going to talk about solo RV travel. Um, I'd like to give you some tips and some information on traveling by yourself. I don't think most a lot of us realize there's probably more solo RVers on the road than um, anyone knows. And anyone who's hesitant about hitting the road alone, don't let fear stop you from living your dream. It's possible. There's no reason why you can't do it. Um, if any of you are wondering why I'm filming this in my house, it's because I'm not in my RV right now, and it is snowing like crazy outside, so it's not a good idea to be sitting outside with my computer, plus I'll freeze to death. Um, okay, back to solo RV. There seems to be two major concerns for anyone who travels alone, especially women. And I have traveled alone, um, so I can understand these. And those are safety and security, which are really valid. They're valid concerns, but they're not insurmountable. So in the beginning, when you first start thinking about solo RVing, research the RV lifestyle. Attend some educational rallies. Learn more about RVing. Here in BC, in Kelowna, they have... Um, seminars at the Okanagan College every year, every June I think it is, which are really highly recommended and they're put on everywhere. There's clubs like Escapees, um, oh gosh, uh, the um, oh, FMCA probably I think has seminars. There's RV groups and clubs out there. Go attend whatever you can. Don't be bashful. Ask lots of questions. Uh, believe me, everybody else in the crowd, crowd probably has the same questions you are or you do. So don't hesitate. This is something you really want to do, then go after it. The next thing that you should make sure you have is a reliable RV that you can handle. Okay, have it checked over by a mechanic or an RV technician before you even purchase it, if it's possible. A number of years ago, I bought a camper van, um, and I felt that it was an awesome deal. It was an older one. It was a 1981. And just to make myself feel better, I had the owner uh, allow me to take it over to a mechanic that I trusted, and he went over it from top to bottom. Uh, looked at me and said buy this thing right away and run so I did but I felt so much better when I um, put the keys in the ignition and it was mine so have it checked over if it's possible if necessary take some lessons by an instructor to get the appropriate license so if you are planning on something really big like a big class A with airbags and the whole ball of wax you're going to need a special license so or there in some areas you need a special license to be pulling uh, one of those big fifth wheels so make sure that you know what you're getting into take some lessons um, it's not impossible hey I have a class 2 with my air brake endorsement I can drive those not that I've done it but I can do it okay so you can too check with your licensing agent before you purchase the RV and find out what you need to operate it that's really important it's not that you can't do it just make sure that you know what you're facing ahead of time you know for the first couple of trips why not travel with some friends if you know um, there's some groups or friends going on a vacation or a weekend jaunt or whatever travel with them for a while uh, at least for one or two times just to get the feel of it but I'm going to recommend that you practice hooking up and unhooking a few times without an audience okay there's nothing worse than trying to do something for the very first time in a campground and have 20 people come over and tell you how you're doing it wrong I've seen it I've been there I've watched I've even parked my lawn chair in front of somebody just so I could watch and have a, a good laugh okay it was with them not against them I was laughing however it also gives you an opportunity to meet some friendly RVers so you choose okay be safe. Keep your RV well maintained to prevent unnecessary breakdowns. There will always be surprises, but by having good tires, regular maintenance, and checkups should reduce the likelihood of problems. 
have set up a regular maintenance schedule and follow it. That's kind of the trick. Follow your instincts. If you feel uncomfortable or a place does not look very good, then move on. You won't sleep very well anyway, so why stay? Okay, there's always other spots open down the road. Park so you can drive straight out. Okay, this is a trick I learned. Um, and most um, regular RVers, long-time RVers have figured this out a long time ago, okay? But if you don't think about it in advance, you might get yourself into a situation. You don't want to have to back out in an emergency or get blocked in by others. This is also really good if you want to leave first thing in the morning and other people are still sleeping. If you're faced in the direction you want to go and nothing is impeding your way, then it's a matter of drive, jumping in the driver's seat and pull, driving away, okay? Or if in an emergency in the middle of the night somebody gets sick and you need to get out, um, that's another reason. Keep your doors locked all the time. Even in the house, my doors are locked always. Um, it's just a habit I get into. When I walk in the door, I lock the door. And not that I'm afraid that somebody's going to try and get in. Uh, it's the same in the RV. The door is always locked. It's just a, be safe. Why not? Close your windows at night. Uh, if you need airflow, um, make sure, you know, you can use your roof vent or however you want to do it. But keep your windows closed at night. If you're boondocking, don't, don't park out in the middle of nowhere by yourself. You know, you probably 99 times out of 100, you'll be fine, but not a good idea. So find out, I've done this, find out where other RVers are. I was in a campground a number of years ago by myself and I was a little hesitant because no one else was in there except for one other RVer. It was a couple and they were in a class C and I was at the other end of the campground thinking I was going to park there. Before I set up, what I did is I did a walk through the campground and I stopped at their spot. And I just general ch chatted with them and got a feel for who they were. And then I said, I'm by myself down at the other end. If there is any problems or you hear anything through the night, would you mind checking on me? They were more than happy. I felt better. I slept very well that night knowing that I wasn't the only one in the campground. And they probably had a sense, feeling of responsibility maybe that they felt okay too. You know, meeting people when you're solo RVing um, is not difficult. If you're traveling with somebody, you probably aren't open to meeting new people. You have a tendency to sit there yourselves and communicate and have a cup of coffee. If you're by yourself, you're going to be open and receptive to meeting new people. There's no reason why you always have to be alone if you don't want to be. If you're sitting out in your campsite in your lawn chair having a cup of coffee, why not put an extra chair beside you? It's an invitation for somebody to come and talk to you and you can let offer them a seat, offer them a coffee, chit chat, you meet other people. I've met the most awesome people by doing that. There's also lots of solo RV clubs or groups that you can join, and they're for all ages and interests. Um, if you go through my website, roamingrv.com, you'll see I've listed a number of them. And there's groups like escapees. Well, there's uh, within escapees, there's individual clubs and groups like solo RVers and such. So absolutely, find the groups, find Whatever you're interested in, there's going to be a group that has a similar interest. Most people have access to the internet, and there's forums online that you can meet others and share conversations with. This is also a really good resource to learn about the lifestyle and ask questions. 
I have met some of the greatest people on the forums. I've never met them in person, but I feel like some of them are actually my friends because we get on and we have questions or if someone has a question and I think I might have an answer, I will offer to try and help. Um, and that's what RVing is all about, is sharing information, sharing the uh, tips and techniques with other RVers, okay? Another thing maybe is get a dog. Pets are great companions. And my own um, Shih Tzu died of old age last fall, and I miss him like crazy. It got, he got me out, got me walking. Um, you know, I know from experience that um, whenever I walked my dog, it created conversation with other dog owners, especially if your dog is uh, really friendly. And mine was really cute, so everybody thought he was a cute little pup, and conversation started. What are your hobbies? Uh, sitting outside with a project will usually bring the curious over to investigate. I've read somewhere that if men just put the hood up of their vehicle, their truck or whatever, it creates a crowd. Automatically, they all have to come over. So if you're working on a project and you're sitting at a picnic table um, and you glance up every once in a while when you see somebody come by, it, that's an invitation. They're curious. They want to know what you're doing. And before you know it, you've made a friend. Work on the road especially if it's somewhere where other RVers either stay or visit. It also helps increase your bank account and you'll be able to travel longer, but it also makes you um, in amongst people and gives you a purpose, which I think everybody needs a purpose. You'll meet people and before you know it, you'll forget that you were ever thought you could be lonely as a solo RVer. Here's some odds and ends. Um, just some easy little tips. Photocopy all your documents and have them in a safe place. Even give a, um, a set with a family member or a friend, it, just in case there's an emergency. Have a checklist for setting up camp and dismantling everything before you hit the road. If you know what are the steps to do to set up or dismantle and you just go down the checklist, um, you're gonna drive away feeling a lot more confident. Get a GPS and learn how to use it. I just got a new car, um, well, a couple of years ago now, and I have a GPS on there. I don't know how I ever managed without it. Um, however, I also suggest get a good set of maps just in case your GPS system doesn't work everywhere, because it doesn't. Um, if you're in some of the remote areas, some remote areas, your GPS is not going to give you all those little side roads and such. Another thing is, if you're trying to keep costs down, um, if you stay in one location longer, you usually get cheap, cheaper rates by the week or the month. Um, there's an advantage to that. You save money. It doesn't cost you as much to camp. The other thing is, if you stick around in an area for a week, you're going to meet people. And before you know it, uh, you're going to, I don't know, maybe plan to meet up in a month down the road somewhere because they're heading maybe in the same direction as you are. Um, you know, that's a suggestion in a way. Rather than just going from campground to campground every night, it gets pretty expensive and you really don't open yourself up to opportunities. Another thing when you're traveling, don't advertise that you're alone. Um, <laughs> Pretend that you're traveling with somebody. Say you stop at a truck stop and you're all by yourself and you want to go in and have a meal, but you really don't want to advertise that you're by yourself. So what you can do is pretend to say goodbye to the person that's in your RV. Hi, or goodbye. Um, I'm going to run in and have something to eat. Can I bring you back something? No? Okay, well, I'll lock the door on my way out. And... You've had this wonderful conversation with this imaginary person and you walk out and you lock the door and nobody knows you're by yourself. Okay? Be at your destination in mid-afternoon and get off the road before dark and before all the campgrounds are full. Why would you want to drive all night in a way? Um, that's not fun. 
So most of the suggestions I've given you apply to all RVers, whether they're uh, traveling alone or actually in a couple or with others. But the main thing I really want you to know is don't let the fear of the unknown stop you from living the lifestyle that you dream about. There are so many spectacular places to visit and there's some really wonderful people out there that you need to meet and adventures to enjoy. I am serious. Get going. Do it. There's no reason why you can't enjoy being a solo RVer. So till next time, this is Carol Ann, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye-bye.